So there are at least two basic tools that you can use to structure a LARP. You can either uh, schedule events or you can design settings where player actions will create them. Uh, for example, if you want the Marquis to be murdered or in your LARP, or if you want somebody to attempt to murder the Marquis, you can simply write a character who plans to murder him. To schedule content, you can use, for example, timetables. Um, there are some LARPs, for example, that are set in a school, like College of Wizardry or Lindengen's Rieks Internat. And in such a LARP, it is natural to have a schedule with classes. You can also use NPCs to create some kind of events, or you can schedule some kind of dramatic events, like if your LARP is set at a spaceship, then at some point the spaceship computer system might break or there might be some accident or something, and you can uh, pre-schedule that. And uh, for this emergent content created by players, you design the kind of settings and characters that will uh, create it. The plus side of scheduled content is that it is very easy to manage. You know what will happen and you know when it will happen. And if it doesn't work during the LARP, you can always uh, change the plan, see how it goes during the game. On the other hand, if you use too much of it, if you don't leave any room for emergent content, then your players might feel like they're on some kind of roller coaster ride where they don't have any say on what happens during the LARP. With emergent content, on the, on the other hand, the players will feel that they are the motor of the story, that everything arises from the character's actions, and it can be very rewarding for the players. The downside, however, is that it is unpredictable. Maybe during the game, your player decides that actually the Marquise is quite a nice guy, and she decides she won't try to murder him at all. Or maybe she murders him only 15 minutes into the game, and then you don't know what to do, like your main plot already happened, even though you planned it would happen like hours into the game. Most LARPs combine both of these approaches. For example, 1942 was set in a Norwegian village under German occupation in the year 1942. There were timetables, there was work, school, there was a dance on one of the evenings, there was a church ceremony on one of the mornings, and there were some dramatic events like an air raid during one day, like it's air raid sirens and you go into the bomb shelter. On the other hand, there was also a lot of conflict built in the setting to create emergent content. Some people were resisting the occupation. Others were members of the Norwegian Nazi party. And some young girls in the village fancied the German soldiers, which created conflict inside their families. Conflict, yes, conflict. In fact, Conflict is one of the easiest ways to design for emergent content. Tinderbox was a LARP with no scheduled content at all. Instead, it had lots of conflict built in. It was a cyberpunk LARP about two street gangs on the brink of war. And there were three levels of conflict in the LARP. First of all, there was conflict between the two gangs, and then there was conflict inside each gang between those characters who wanted to fight and those who wanted peace. Also, some characters had an internal conflict, 
on whether they should fight and possibly die in the fight, or whether they should flee, which would be dishonorable. In fact, LARPs and stories as well are so often built on conflict that it can be hard to imagine how to make an interesting LARP without pre-planned conflict plots. When I signed up for Koi Koi, a LARP about a five-day hunter-gatherer festival, I was afraid I would get bored since there clearly was no conflict built into the setting. However, I wasn't bored at all, and we had a very interesting time playing various rites of passage. For example, there were young members of the tribes, various tribes, that had to pass adulthood tests in order to become full members of their tribes. The reason why we didn't get bored was that each day was carefully structured with rituals. So we played several rites and rituals every day. So a rule of thumb is that the less conflict you build into your setting, the more schedules you need. Aimlessness creates boredom, and the players need some kind of focus to avoid aimlessness and to avoid the boredom that comes with it. You have this kind of focus or a sense of purpose when you have a clear goal or a plan. For example, I want to murder the Marquis and you have means to achieve it, like I have some poison here to murder him. Or if you know that you are, or you also have this uh, sense of purpose, if you know you're acting inside some kind of a time frame, for example, you are at school and you know you have still half an hour to socialize with your friends before the math class will start. So, rule of thumb, the less conflict, the more schedules. Thank you. <laughs>